It has been forever since I've been able to get out in the woods. And I don't mean like it feels like it's been forever. It's been actually six weeks, almost two months since I've been able to get out and just enjoy a day in the woods by myself, no specific agenda. I, I can make all kinds of excuses, but I won't. I will tell you that my wife and I spent two weeks in Kuzbequak National Park at the end of July, early August. And then at the end of August, uh, after having returned home and taken care of all the things you need to do around the house, we packed up and headed off to Austria to visit my son and his wife. So we spent two weeks in Austria, we got back, and there's all those things that you need to do around the house. But today, today I get to go out and play in the woods. And I'm so excited. And the reason I'm excited is it is, I think, maybe the third or fourth day of fall since fall arrived here in Nova Scotia. It's mid-morning. We're already at 20 degrees. Fall, at least for me, here in Nova Scotia, it is the most beautiful time of the year. Tell me if you agree. Do you enjoy fall as much as I do? What makes fall so beautiful? Well, all the plant life has come to life. Most of it's gone through its life cycle. It's getting ready to uh, close down for the winter, if you will. And that means a lot of the forageable mushrooms and other edibles and medicinals are all ready to pick. The colors are starting to change and uh, that makes it just more beautiful to be in the woods. At least I feel it does. There are no flies. No flies at all. I'm walking into all kinds of uh, spider webs, but no flies. And that just adds to the beauty of it. It's cool in the morning, still warm in the afternoon. The days are getting a bit shorter, so if I'm out for a day hike, I get to get up early, get out and get back. If I'm out for an overnighter, oh, wow. You know, it just gets really comfortable at night, and that that's, makes it just that much nicer. But what am I doing today? Not a whole lot. I packed my coffee gear. I'm going to have a nice cup of coffee beside the lake when I make it down there. I packed uh, my pack saw, the Egawa Canyon Boreal 21. And the reason I packed a saw that big is we had a hurricane come through here, as most of you are probably aware, Hurricane Dorian, devastated the Bahamas, made its way up the east coast of the U.S. and struck Nova Scotia. Now, the damage wasn't extremely extensive, but it was comprehensive. In other words, it did cover a lot of areas. We were away in Austria, but we did watch it at home. We were spared any misfortune at our property in Halifax. Others were not so lucky, including a crane that came down on top of a, a new building under construction. What benefit is there to a hurricane going through? Well, if you're a wood carver, that means hopefully a fresh crop of down green trees that you can harvest and take home. That's kind of what I'm looking to do. Uh, I don't like cutting down green trees just for the sake, well, actually I won't cut down a green tree just for the sake of gathering some green wood to carve. But if one has been knocked down by the wind, then why not harvest a couple pieces off of it? So I'm looking for some down trees. I've already passed a few maples that are down. I'm looking for something a little bit larger in diameter so that I can uh, maybe make a kutsa or a bowl out of it. Um, what else am I doing? Mushrooms. So <laughs> not much of a start, but I've only been in the woods a few minutes. And I don't have a positive ID on this yet. I will take this one home. It's a little buggy, but I think I can work around that. I know this to be a bolete mushroom because of the polypore underside of it. It has a small, or a smooth brown, actually shiny surface on the top and a yellow stem. Look, there is a remnant of a veil. Um, what I know about bolete mushrooms is the vast majority of them are edible. There are none that are truly poisonous. There are some that will make you sick. There might be a couple that are poisonous. I'll have to double check. Chances are this is an edible mushroom. So what I'll do is I'll take it home and I've got identification books at home which will help me identify this as either an edible or a non-edible mushroom. Uh, but chances are it is. I believe I recognize it, but I'm not going to put a name to it until I know that for sure. What else am I going to do? Well, I've got a few pieces of gear I can share with you, including this. I have to step back so you can see it. Yeah, get up on the rocks here. Chest rig. This is the third item that Helicon Tex had sent to me back last winter, and it's a chest rig. They call it the Numbat. And I don't know if I'll do a review on it shortly. I have been wearing it on and off. I have some mixed opinions on it, some mixed feelings. It does have a role, but it's not as multi-use as I would like it to be, but I'm wearing it out today to see if, uh, if I can fall in love with it or not. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. I do have a few other things I'm, I might be able to share with you along the way. 
But that's it. If you're interested in seeing some early fall colors, you know, we really haven't done all the leaf change that we could. Some early fall colors, maybe some mushrooms, and just sitting by the lake, having a cup of coffee, then follow along. Here's a cool little plant you really only see, I think, in, I don't know if you call it blossom, but in this condition or this state around this time of year, early fall. It is related to cotton. It's referred to as a cotton. And I just want to get in a little closer. It grows in boggy or swampy areas. Now, maybe because of the morning dew, this is still quite damp. But if I was looking for a flash tinder and I couldn't find any cattail around, if I collect some of this up, as long as it's dry, haven't been in the sun, then uh, this makes a good flash tinder. As I mentioned, fall is the most beautiful time of the year to be in the woods here in Nova Scotia, at least in my opinion. And one of the things I like about this time of year is foraging, which of course is one of the things I did set out to do today. And here's something I didn't expect to see still around. Huckleberries still on the bush. I thought they would be pretty much gone by now. Mm -hmm. Maybe the sweetest were saved for last. Now here's a berry. People ask me about quite a bit. Is it edible? Is it poisonous? Well, <laughs> it's not poisonous, but it's not edible. This is mountain holly. Looks like a little cherry, but it's not. It's got a, uh, I, I call it a pastel red. That's probably not the best way of describing the berry. But uh, try one. You won't, you'll probably spit it out. Light, I, I'm pretty sure you'll spit it out. It'll pull your cheeks together. They're so astringent. Uh, I'm supposed if you were able to get them down, you might make yourself sick. But one berry is not going to hurt you. But I, I'm pretty much guaranteed you're not going to eat these. They're uh, not very tasty at all. But there are plenty of other things that I'm going to be able to find that are. So let's keep looking. From what you can see around me, I'm in some pretty dense wood. By the way, that's my path that goes up over the hill there, so I have to hike up that in a second. But before I do, look at the size of this thing. I'm going to have to get down there, put my hand across it. Yeah. It's as big as my hand, or bigger. And from the look of them, I do believe these are an Amanita mushroom based on their color, the fact that they're gilled, and the fact that they have the little almost like a candy coating on top of them. Not edible, most of which are poisonous, or at least to, will make you very sick. But always fun to find different mushrooms in the woods, especially where you're not expecting to see them. place for lunch. Okay. I think this is where I'll Set up and have some lunch. My little McKinley chair. I'm loving that so far. Yeah. Some berries collected along the route way. Name pad. Oh, that's great for the old knees. So it's a nice little rock shelf where I'm sitting right now, and uh, I'm just looking for a place to set my chair up, and then I'll set up my little alcohol stove and heat up some lunch. So the rock shelf down by the lake that I chose to have my lunch. A um, little windier than I thought it might be. So I'm trying to shelter in behind a rock here. It's also not a very level rock shelf, so uh, it's going to work with what I have. And we in Nova Scotia are still under a fire ban. Now that'll probably, well, one good rain should help us out. 
In fact, a lot of the province has had its fire ban lifted, but not here. We haven't had enough rain. So, as a result, I'll be using alcohol today. And I'll be using my Firebox Nano as the setup for this. Get the sticks in here properly. fire sticks. That should work here. I don't want to turn those in yet. I gotta put my stove in. This is my Alox Trangia knockoff stove. Works well. And put some Fuel in, denatured alcohol. A windscreen I'll set up around it. The pot I'm using is uh, not especially wide, so I need to have the legs turned in. Reduces the stability a little bit of the of the nano, but not excessively. I know a lot of people like to use their fire steel to start their alcohol stoves. I just use a wick. It's just literally a candle wick. Has wax on it, but I dip it in the alcohol, and then that that's all I have to do. Now I know it's lit because I can see the heat waves and feel the heat, but I cannot see the flame because of the sunlight here. Lunch today. Well, here's a cook kit you probably have not seen me use before. It's one of those anodized aluminum two-piece cook kits. Coffee. I don't use it very often because, well, to be honest, I just have so many cook kits. Fits on like that. But it's a nice, lightweight, good volume pot. And it'll work just right for what I'm putting together here. See, it's not very level here, is it? And my lunch, I was going through the things that I have. Look, this is kind of appropriate for at least this time of the year. Pumpkin beef soup. <laughs> so uh, it's a dehydrated package of uh, pumpkin soup. You add your beef. It, there's no beef in this. I, I kind of hoped when I had... Uh, gotten it but no and you add two cups of water to it I do have some beef that I will add to it oh that wind there goes my chair in the lake folks gotta run and get my chair all right I'm back that was a near disaster. The wind picked up my little folding chair and carried it right into the lake, but I was able to get it before it went too far. water that I filtered with one of the things I brought along with me, which is a water filter that I was sent for testing. I'll share that with you in a little while. And where did I put my spoon? I know it's in here somewhere. It's a spork, came out of China. It looks like the light my fire type of sporks. This one's stainless steel, it's not titanium, but at uh, about a dollar. 
works well for this. I'm not a fan of the plastic light my fire sports. One, they're short, but two, they break easy. Okay, that's hot. And it looks about as stable as I can expect it to be. Put the lid on. Now, what I'm going to be adding to that, it's uh, beef jerky. It's the nugget kind, so it's not real jerky. You get it in nuggets. You can get it in different places. Costco is one place. Uh, I think I got these ones at Walmart. So I just have a few pieces here. I'm actually going to cut them up a little bit as this heats up. So in fact, I think what I'll do is uh, stop the camera now and just uh, work on my lunch. And when uh, my lunch is ready to eat, I'll sit back and uh, you can enjoy it with me. So while I wait for my uh, soup to finish simmering, I thought I'd just share this with you. I'm right at the edge of the lake and not uncommon right along the edge of the lake to find this. Cranberries. Not quite ripe as you can see. Usually wait later in October. Maybe even after the first frost to start picking them. But all along the edge of the lake here are cranberries, so I may just make my way back here in a month's time and see if I can't get a few pounds of cranberries. Okay, well, super. Man, that turned out quick. I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I'm going to try and show it to you. Hopefully you can see that. <laughs> I guess the mix is like one of those instant chicken noodle mix, ch chicken noodle soup mixes. There's noodles in it, but the pumpkin thickened up very nicely. And the beef that I had, it's a good thing it was soft. If, if it was true jerky, it would never have softened up uh, in, in the time that I had it in the water anyway. But it cooked up nice. I think it should be ready to eat. Let's give it a try. Still a little bit of warm, still very good. Okay, um, there's a lot of wind where I'm at right now. Hopefully you'll be able to hear me as I speak. Put that down. Microphone is sitting right here on my, on my shirt. So, a little bit of a catch up. What's been going on? On September 1st, I had, well, actually, before September 1st, sometime around the 30th, I exceeded 10,000 subscribers. Wow. Uh, I just I just didn't expect to do that. That's three years of YouTube videotaping. I have a couple hundred videos out now. I'm having a lot of fun with it. But as I mentioned in an earlier video, it was starting to get expensive coming out of my own money to buy all the things that people wanted to see on YouTube. So I monetized my videos and I'm starting to get a very, very modest income out of it. No, I, I can't even say it's an income. I, I would call it almost like tips or gratuity. But I have been able to get enough to buy a few items that I'm going to be able to bring to you and show you. So what do I have? I have a whole lot, a whole range of little twig stoves, stick stoves, little wooden stoves, not the least of which I was one of the lucky few to be able to purchase the initial run of titanium Gen 2 fireboxes from Firebox Stove. Mine's number 62 and I'll show you that in a future video. I just didn't bring it out today because, well, we're under a fire ban and the temptation to use it would have been a little bit too great. Yes, I could have used it with the alcohol. Maybe I should have brought it out for that. So far, everything I can see about the stove is virtually identical to the stainless steel version, except it's half the weight, maybe even less than half the weight. I'll do a weight comparison. I'll do a full side-by-side -side stove comparison, of course. Uh, Steve from Firebox Stove is now contemplating putting them into full production. He wants to get some feedback from the initial 100 people like myself who bought one just to make sure they're standing up to what he had already tested. But so far, everything looks amazing. Long time coming and well worth the wait, but not cheap. Uh, so that'll be the biggest debate. The Firebox stainless steel still does everything it was supposed to do. It's still bomb proof. It'll still last you forever. It's still, in my, my opinion, the most versatile 
stove on the market. It was just its weight that was the only downside. Now, if you're not an ultralight hiker, and I'm not, then maybe you don't mind carrying the weight, and I didn't. But I was curious to see if the titanium one would reduce my pack weight some, and it does, by at least a pound. It doesn't sound like a lot, but when you're loading everything else into your backpack, it makes a difference. But I have a few other stoves. Some interesting ones that, uh, one from Germany. I, I won't share too much about it yet, because it just arrived in the mail the other day, but I'm impressed. Small cottage industry. Uh, and I don't, I, I've only, there's only a couple of videos on YouTube, at least in English, about this stove. And I'll share that with you coming up shortly. What else is going on? Uh, there are some more products coming to me from testers. Uh, I've been, I guess, catching the attention of a few of the people out there who have things like hammocks and water filters and those types of things. I don't automatically accept their products. I have a look at what others have to say. I have a look and see if it's something I'd be personally interested in having. So I have a little bit of review on it. And then when I reply back to the companies, I let them know right up front how I will test it and my honesty that will go along with that. So uh, they seem to be worth or they seem to be okay with that. We'll see. Nothing is perfect. There is probably fault I could find with everything, but I will share with you what I feel is good about each of these products and what I feel is a miss or could be improved upon. Speaking of products, I mentioned this when I first started. This is the Helicon Tex Numbat chest rig. The third of the three products that Helicon Test Tex sent to me some months ago, many months ago now. And uh, I left this one for last because even though it was something I didn't expect them to send for, I just said it would be interesting to have one of these, they sent it to me. Um, I don't know. It's, it, it may not fit into my normal use. The concept is, it's a chest rig that you can put everything that you might otherwise have in your pockets or things that you want from your backpack, but you don't want to have to take your backpack off every time to reach them. You can kind of carry them right here on the chest. Uh, and another day, I'll show you my loadout for this, this rig. Um, it is, it's, what can I say about it? It's convenient. So far, I've only really used it during the warmer months over a shirt. I can get very warm next to my body, but there is padding on the back. I think the padding is not so much for comfort as it is for perspiration. Um, it's an interesting idea. I think people who are in search and rescue would really enjoy this. But it's nice to have it hands-free. It's nice to have all that stuff out of my pants pockets and shirt pockets and jacket pockets. But I'll, uh, I'll do a more thorough review of it a little later on. What else is new? Not much, you know. It's funny. Two months of not making YouTube videos in the woods. And I feel like I'm being an amateur starting all over again. The tripod, the gorilla tripod, the camera's sitting on right now. When I did my introduction and then walked on, I had to go back 20 minutes to get it. I left it on the tree. Forgot. Uh, I should have brought out a full tripod because here I am trying to balance the camera on a rock as I sit in my wet little McKinley chair here. It's drying out very quickly, but uh, it's a lot more comfortable than sitting on the rock. Yeah, I guess there's not much else I can say right now of what's going on. Oh, my mushrooms. Uh, so far, I have a bag of bleach mushrooms. I'll just show you one example. I believe right now them all to be edible. They all pass the initial tests on edibility, but I have some good books at home on mushroom identification and access to a few experts as well. I'll take them home and uh, positively ID them, clean them up, make sure I don't uh, keep any of the bug, buggy parts. A few of them have been a little bit chewed on. I've been uh, looking at all the mushrooms. I, there's quite a few I didn't pick as a result. Well, that's my day. So I'm going to finish my lunch, which is getting nice and thick now. Mm. I'm going to have coffee before I go. That was kind of like the whole point was to come out and have coffee. I'm still enjoying the Rampage coffee. Today I have the code black with me. It's been my uh, 
preferred choices for out in the woods. I like a dark roast coffee, as most of you know. So I, I will be making some coffee before I turn off, but for now I'm just going to sit back in the sun, eat my lunch, then I'll decide if I'll make coffee here or somewhere else. Whew. All right, later in the day, but I did move on, like I mentioned I might. I've been looking for a new location to have my coffee. So I have my uh, Alox burner on my nano stove just off to my side here uh, behind a windscreen, bringing some water to a boil. My coffee today, as it has been quite a bit lately, is the Kicknuck, the uh, Rampage. Rampage Code Black, not the Riot. I've, I, quite often carry the Riot. The Riot is their medium blend. The Code Black is their dark blend. And if you can see, I've got a vacuum sealed in a, in a vacuum sealed bag right here. But if you can see how oily that is, that just gives an indication how dark it is. And uh, I'll open this up. I have my grinder right here. Somebody mentioned in one of my videos recently, in the right, and I, I knew this, I just didn't uh, mention it, that if you take your grinder, one of these types of grinders with you, and you have the AeroPress, you don't really need to take the bottom at all. This will sit down inside the, the open cavity of the AeroPress, and you just save that much more space. Then when you go to grind, grind directly into the AeroPress, and you really don't need this bottom. Uh, I'm not using the AeroPress today. I've got something completely different I'll share with you in a minute. But first, I've got to get some coffee into the grinder. Oh, I could eat those beans just the way they are. I know I say this all the time, but freshness makes a difference. And there's nothing like the Rampage coffee for freshness. Hold that back. Put that aside. All right, now you have seen me grind coffee before, so you don't need to see me do it again, but I'll start and bring it back when it's all ground. All right, coffee is ground. So what am I doing differently today? This is a pour-over device. It's a GSI ultralight uh, mesh nylon filter that fits on over the cup. You can see how it attaches. It's an extremely lightweight little, little thing from GSI. I'll put a link in the show notes if you're interested in and, uh, seeing what they're worth. They don't cost much money either. I, I don't expect that this is a, how should I say, something that's going to last a long time. I'm very careful with how I pack it. The plastic, I'm not sure, will, will stand up to any type of abuse. But if you're looking for a lightweight making, way of making coffee, this is a good one. You don't need a paper filter. I don't even know if a paper filter would add anything to this. So, making pour-over coffee. I have, I'm going to get that out of the way so you can see what I'm doing here. I have my water boiled, just off of boiled, so it's just below the 212, probably around 200 degrees. You can still see steam coming off of it. So when you're using a pour-over device, the correct way to use it is to start by pouring just a little bit of water in and let the coffee expand and it is it's actually expanding as it soaks up some of the water and it releases gases so it's pre soaking the coffee so that it uh, the next pour of water doesn't go through quite so quickly and then ever so slowly just work your way around a little bit at a time I like to work my way around the outside as I go because that uh, the coffee then you know is moved back into the center of the filter. So it's not real fast. In fact, it's a bit of a slow way, but it's a very tried and true method to pour over. Grind for this, fine. Doesn't have to be ultra fine. Below, you know, finer than coarse, somewhere between coarse and fine, I guess. I, I have it for a, a fine grind. I had the, uh, the grinder set for it.
Oh yeah. A well-deserved cup of coffee. What a beautiful day it's been. I've been out all day. I haven't been filming near as much as I have been walking, hiking, finding mushrooms, looking at different things. I think I mentioned it earlier. I'm a, it seems like I'm out of practice. It's like afterwards I go, oh, I should have had the camera on for that. Maybe I can go back and get it. Nah, it's never as good looking at something the second time as it is the first time. So oh, there'll be lots of opportunities to do that in the future. Right now, though, it's all about sitting back. I'm on a hike right now looking over part of the lake, a little cove of the lake here. I'll show it to you in a minute, but I'm just sitting back with my coffee. Oh, my little McKinley chair. Which I am truly appreciating as my body gets older. Comfortable. The sun is just off to my left, setting. Well, not setting. I mean, it's still got a few hours left. Well, how much has it got left? Oh, about four hours before it really goes down. But it's uh, mid-afternoon, late afternoon. Oh, there's something I haven't mentioned. Earlier I had said that I was going to uh, look for some wood to do some carving projects with. Well, I, I didn't find the sized logs that I uh, wanted to, to, something to make a bowl or a cooksa out of. I'll keep looking for that. I may not get it this trip. I'll source, you know, there's, I'm sure there's other places I can get something. Um, I did pick up a piece of maple. I took about an 18 inch section. It has a, a knot of one in the part of the section I'll have to take off. So I will be able to do a couple of spoons. But the reason why I was looking for some fresh wood to do some carving, spoon carving or coxa carving was because I have, wait now, let's see if I can reach it here in my pack. I have a new carving kit. It is, uh, well, you've probably heard of these. My friend Wade over at uh, Woods Walker 1965 has been a, big, been a big proponent of these. This is the Beavercraft Company. So they sent me their beginning kit as well. I'm just going to show it to you. I'm not really, I can't demonstrate it today, but this is their, I call it their beginner because they have so many other things uh, in their lineup that you can add to this, but it comes with a nice canvas roll. There is a one-sided right hand, see if I can get it out, hook knife. Very sharp. I'll do a better description of them later. There is a nice scoundy ground sloyd knife, or sloyd I guess is what you would refer to it as. Something I don't have a lot of experience with is a chip knife for chip carving or fine detail work. So it'll be interesting. The nice hardwood, look like oak to me handles. Also came with a piece of leather and some stropping compound. Because of course it's a lot easier to keep your knife sharp than it is to sharpen it from a dull state. So uh, my intent is to get some wood, do a little work with them. I really can't pass judgment on them. Uh, my initial thought is that it is what I would call a, a, an entry level set. It's a kind of a beginner set. It's, uh, you know, this, well, for some people, that may be the only set that they want. I have a f full set of Mora uh, hook knives, and I've got some handmade gouges as well. I'll, uh, I'll show you again in another video. But if you just want to get into spoon carving, and you're looking for some very basic tools, it looks like the Beaver Craft line of tools gives you a very affordable option compared with the Mora tools. And after that, you may find this is, is the most, that's all you need to spend. This is all you really need for your kit. Get the most out of these. Or you may decide that you want to upgrade to something else. I think also these are probably good for modifying. And I have modified a few of my more uh, uh, tools, so um, I'll show the, that again someday in the future. But uh, yeah, it's a nice little kit. It packs nicely. If I had found a piece today that could have been split open, I might have done a little carving. I'll save that for another time. So I just wanted to introduce that to you. Oh, among the many other things that I have sitting at home waiting to come out into the woods. So this is the first hike I've been out in the fall. God, it's the first hike I've been out in a long time. 
and uh, just kind of getting reacquainted with an old friend is a good way of saying it. I didn't put too much of an expectation on myself. The coffee was what I really wanted to do, and I'm glad I did. Rampage coffee, folks. I'll say it again. Freshness counts. And then, uh, as fall comes on and the fire ban is lifted, I have all kinds of stoves to play with out here. All right, I'm going to sit back and enjoy the coffee, but before I leave, I'll show you my look off and show you exactly what I see right here, because it's, it's uh, beautiful, just beautiful. Bring you back in a few moments. Just a quick shot of the area where I'm just sitting, enjoying my coffee. I don't think I even want to get out of my chair right now. I'm sheltered from the wind, enjoying the view. Not much change to the color in the trees yet, but there will be over the next few weeks. It hasn't gotten below 10, 12 degrees at night, but when it does, the colors will start to come out. But I'll be back. What I just found? Puffball. Yeah, I think it may be gone. I'll have to open it up to have a look. There's a few things you have to do for identification of puffballs before you know whether or not they're edible. This one doesn't feel too firm. I suspect if I open it up, I'm just going to get a face full of spores. I'm going to put that on the ground for a minute. But there is my bag of bolites for today. I found a little bit of Labrador tea other small things to go along with it but uh, all in all for reintroduction to the woods after six weeks almost two months out of the woods it was a good day enjoyed a good cup of rampage code black coffee enjoyed a nice pumpkin beef soup something I've never had before it was a little bit salty but uh, you know it wasn't bad it wasn't bad very easy to cook up uh, lots and lots of huckleberries still to be to be had so I stopped and I Filled uh, my handful of huckleberries and chewed those down for a little bit of energy. But it's time, like all good things, must come to an end. So it's time for me to head out of the woods until the next time I have some an opportunity to get back into the woods. And hopefully the fire ban will be lifted and I'll be able to bring my wood stoves with me. But until then, do what I did today. Get out and explore and take that path less traveled. It'll make all the difference. Bye for now.